Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can monitor your MongoDB with a Zabbix, which is open source product without any cost, so it is absolutely free. You can go right now to the Zabbix.com download section, um, check the version that you want, and I suggest you using the latest one and install your Zabbix server, at least for the testing. Or you can go to the YouTube and search again Zabbix server installation and you will find my video with the detailed steps and uh, I will guide you how you can actually install your first Zabbix server. After the Zabbix server is installed, it will be really required only a couple of minutes to configure your first MongoDB monitoring with official templates. So what I have here is uh, basically a clean Oracle Linux uh, 8 virtual machine um, just for the testing purposes. And I have here also the Zabbix uh, server version 5.4.3 and uh, also the MongoDB uh, database version 502. So the database itself is absolutely empty, like there is uh, no data, it is not used by anything, but it will be enough to show you how you can monitor it. And this solution will work both for the simple node monitoring of MongoDB and also for the MongoDB cluster monitoring. So without any waiting, let's start. If you installed your Zabbix server, one of the first steps was to add official Zabbix repository. And if you have a Zabbix server on some um, different server than the MongoDB database that you want to monitor, then what I suggest you doing is just grabbing this repository and adding it also to the host where you have your database spinning. Then after the repository is added, you need to install Zabbix agent, but which is important, Zabbix agent 2. And uh, what to do if you already have a Zabbix agent running on this machine? Well, there are two options. You can still run them both, but you will have to change the listening port on one of them because by default, both of them are listening to the port 10050. So it will not be possible to have two agents up and running listening on the same port. Another option is to simply replace your Zabbix agent 1 with the Zabbix agent 2 because this guy is capable of the same stuff as the first one and additionally it has uh, much wider functionality as example the MongoDB database monitor. After we installed the Zabbix agent 2 the only thing that we need to do in the Mongo database is to add a user that we'll be actually using to uh, collect the data from our database. So what we need to do is enter the shell then we're gonna use admin and I will just copy paste already prepared lines how to create a user so db.createUser and the username will be zabbix underscore mon and password will be also the same for the testing purposes so just click OK and we see OK once so user created successfully that's all we need in our database so we can go control C to exit from it then we can just check the configuration file of the Zabbix agent2.conf and uh, where the server parameter. So this is uh, the list of IP addresses of um, IP addresses or DNS name from which the agent will accept uh, connection. So make sure that here you have IP address of uh, machine where you have your Zabbix server installed. So in my case, I have the agent uh, Zabbix server and also MongoDB database on the same virtual machine. That's why the local host will work for me. If you have it on some other server, don't forget to add IP address here. So that's basically again the only change that we need to do in the agent uh, in the agent config file. And after saving the config file, we can for sure start our uh, Zabbix agent 2. Again, don't mess up with a Zabbix agent 1. So that was all that we need to do in our uh, Linux CLI. And now we can actually proceed to the actual front end of the Zabbix, again, version 5.4. And uh, we need to create a host for our MongoDB database monitoring. So go to the configuration hosts, click on create host and let's call it uh, MongoDB. We must add at least one group and uh, we can create a new one like MongoDB uh, servers. So this will be a host group well, where we will put our all our MongoDB database hosts. And uh, interfaces, let's add an agent interface because the monitoring will be done through the agent. Then we need to add a template. So just search for Mongo 
and you will find two available templates one is just for the node the second one is for the whole cluster and both of these will work if you did the configuration that we did here so add a username remember that username we're still going to need it and um, edit the server parameter in the Zabbix agent configuration file. So um, for this video, I will be using the node monitoring. So click add, and we've added a host with 44 items, seven triggers, nine graphs, and four low-level discovery rules, which right now is not working yet. We need to open the host, and then we need to open the macros tab. So here, click on inherited and host macroses and you'll find a lot of macroses that are coming from the template. You see most of them are about a MongoDB like uh, connection percentage use it maxed uh, for the warning. So this is some sort of the threshold and uh, many other parameters like the MongoDB password, which we actually have to change. And remember, I've created user Zabbix underscore mon, the password was, and uh, MongoDB username. <coughs> So for the user, also Zabbix underscore mon. Also, if you're running your MongoDB on some other server, don't forget about this uh, connection string, which is in this this syntax. So TCP slash slash, in my case, localhost again will work because I have all of those three components on the same machine. If you're using some remote server monitoring, then just fill in the correct IP address. So that's basically it, the Zabbix underscore mon. I've added username and password uh, connection string is okay port is default so I will click update and then it's just a matter of waiting for minute or two for the Zabbix server to actually uh, reload the configuration cache and start pulling in first data after short waiting, you should see that availability of our MongoDB host became green, which means that the Zabbix agent is successfully getting the data from our host. And what sort of data are we getting? Well, we can check in the configuration items. So uh, asserts, user rollovers, bytes out, bytes in, the current queue, queue readers, total writers, open no timeout, and much, much more data. Um, yeah, and there are also low-level discoveries that will automatically discover discover information about a collection of discovery, database discovery, replication discovery, and wire tiger metrics. So all of these are functioning automatically. And at this moment, we could already go to the monitoring latest data, check our MongoDB host, and you see that all of the information is coming inside of Zabbix. We are receiving the data. Uh, most of the data is zeros, again, simply because uh, my MongoDB database is not utilized at all. It is absolutely empty without any connections to that. And uh, when you're collecting the data, of course, you also can create the triggers. Let's say if you want to rece receive some sort of notifications about the problems that, let's say, connection to MongoDB is unavailable, or there might be too many cursors are timing out over some predefined uh, time period, or too many cursors opened by MongoDB for the clients over again predefined uh, periods. So where can we find this value? MongoDB cursor open max warning. Uh, remember we need to go to the host configuration, macros, inherited macros, um, and MongoDB cursor timeout uh, max warning. So here, if the received value will be higher than one, you will receive a problem. And if you need to change it, go ahead, just override the value with the threshold that you're interested in. So thank you guys for watching. This was a very simple tutorial how you can monitor your MongoDB database with official Zabbix templates out of the box. Hope you liked it. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and goodbye.